Hi. Hi. I'm in your house. You're in my house. And I feel like I've been watching you decorate since you moved in. I've been very nosy too. Okay, good. Because <laughs> the space is cool, but I felt like I didn't have like an idea of the, the, the layout. I feel like a lot of times people, when they come in, especially for a New York apartment, they're yeah. like, your place is quite large. I this cannot is, tell yes. from all the photos. I know. Yes. I know. It's big. Kind of lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Candice Marie. I am a social media consultant. Also, I am the founder of Black King Corporate, and this is my home. You guys, I actually forgot how I knew Kelly. And I knew we just followed each other for quite some time, but she brought back to my memory that I actually reached out to her when I was working at Essence doing editorial for their online fashion series. And so that's how we met. magazine do you need projector screen it's just like everything even sometimes I might come over here and just be on my laptop watching TV but I made a rule that work does not come into this area Love so that. I had to put boundaries in my home because I would just work literally 24 7 mm -hmm. and I was like no you can't pass this threshold <laughs> with work so it's like if you bring the computer over here it's to watch TV an invisible force field I love it yes What's your favorite thing in this room? My grandmother. Oh, that's beautiful. So the crazy part is, is that I actually took this photo on my iPhone. What? And it was literally maybe a few weeks before she passed away too. And I love this image so much. And I was like, let me see if I can get blown up the power of an iPhone. Yeah. And it was able to get, they were able to get it this big. And so I was like, I want it in my living room. I want to be able to look at this photo. I just. I don't know, it was just so beautiful profile. It was like such a quick moment. You would have thought like photography, no. It's stunning. So it's it's my favorite piece in this room. And it feels very much like her. She's sitting in her living room. She's not even watching TV. The TV's on, very, like, I feel like black grandmother. Oh, like the TV's uh, on, they're not even watching it. AKA also me. <laughs> the TV and watches me. It's just me. noise. It's just noise. Yes. And she's just, we're just in there chatting, talking, she's just relaxing. I think she had the earrings on because she was getting ready for her birthday, yes. actually. So she had the earrings on, had came down for her birthday, so I don't know. That one's, that's a special piece to me. It's not about like the worth of it. It's so crazy that like it was a moment that I didn't even kind of think and consider. Though. Yes, yeah, it's yes. Invaluable. Yeah. Beautiful, cozy little couch here. Where's this from? This is from Cardiel. Yeah, I love them. I love them. I wanted something that's a bit more structured. I'm not a slouchy couch Me person. Me either. I don't like to be falling into the couch. No. Like I need to be like sitting up <laughs> and support. like firm, support. Same. It's nice, it's chic, it gets the job done. It's minimalistic. I'll be holding on to this for and a while. And it's ethical and it's yes. not made of MDF, it's real wood. I'm a huge Cardiel fan. I have a sofa from them and I love it. Fun trick. So I actually ordered the wrong side of the, like, you know, it's like, do you want to go to the left or the right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I finagled it where it looked just a little bit more modern and made it two separate pieces. It's so cool. Which, which I actually cool. liked even better once I like kind of figured it out. So yeah, it's great. And I think the mirror here is so smart because it's reflecting the light from the other side. And there's a point of the, the day where like the sun's coming in and actually bounces back all the way here. So it's like, it's just like that natural light in the morning. And that's like, I'm a very early morning person, like four, four thirty. I'm wow. like hitting okay. work like early. So it's nice to like be up when the sun rises and it's just like very calming in the morning, very peaceful. Love it. Black girl in her coffee. That's me. Period. So yeah. I remember this moment on Instagram and I I think it was one of those moments where it was like friend to fan like I literally was like this woman is the truth it just <laughs> blew my mind and I love that it's in your home please tell us everything about this photo it's it's a, such a beautiful photo like me looking at it I think of Nikki Nelms because she did my hair Christopher Thomas he did the photography and this was a moment that I was at Barney's and 
I'm not a buyer. I was lead for their social media team, but I had an idea about b bringing black hair care into Barney's. Cause I was like, our hair, we spend so much money on black hair. So much. And I'm like, if that's not luxury, I don't know what is. And I was like, you're missing a whole market of black women who spend so much money on their hair. And I was able to source and find a brand called Brown Butter Beauty. I still use the, use the products to this day. Um, she's based in Brooklyn and essentially was a story to tell about the launch of Barney's picking the brand up. So I originally worked with the buyers and said like, hey, I found this brand. You should, you know, take a look. They ended up picking it up. They couldn't even keep the brand in stock. Like it kept going off the shelf consistently. And they were like, oh my gosh, do you know any other brands? But it it spoke, like even looking at this photo, it's, it's like you can accept kind of what's there at the table or you could actually see like, what can I do to change it? And there was so many moments like this. I felt like at Barney's where I was like, how can I make a change that's actually, you know, not surface level, but somebody's whole career, somebody's entire, like, again, because once they realized that, I was like, okay, who else can we pick up? And then other brands are starting to catch on being like, oh, maybe we should do this. So that was a very, very special moment. And the photo just did what it needed to do. It belongs <laughs> on the wall, baby. It, it belongs, belongs on the wall. wall. Like, it belongs somewhere for purchase that people can put you on other walls because I love my goodness, I love this photo. Nikki called that here the rich bitch flip. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Nikki, I would never forget that. Ever. <laughs> it's so good. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Like, I feel like I'm going to be pointing and screaming the entire time. This is so chic. Thank you. I'm obsessed. And so like cozy. This doesn't um, feel like Manhattan. Okay, so that was the point. And so, honestly, it's very much giving... When I went to Portugal, mm -hmm. I, I was like, man, I feel so relaxed here. How can I bring pieces yes. of that back here yes. and feel like an oasis? I mean, we'll get to my office, but that especially was the place where I was like, I need to feel like I'm here most of... Out of the entire place in the yeah. apartment, I'm there the most. Okay. So I, like, I need this to feel not like a dungeon Sterile, corporate like yeah. I need it to be for like welcoming lighting these just like I know you notice like certain moments where it's like it's like different hints of different yes. like yes the phone yes like a piece of pottery yes even like this teapot it's beautiful it's just things in my head that I was like how do I make this feel like home and also when I'm coming even back from like a vacation mm -hmm. like I still walk and feel like yeah. You know that breath you take? Absolutely. Just like, yes. And I feel like that's what you get when you curate, right? When you curate your space and it's just your collection of things from where you've been yes. and what you love, you walk in and you really get a sense of a person. So the thing is like this space is so incredible because the kitchen is set in the center, which I feel like could be challenging if you're not, you know, creative and know how to freak it. Mm -hmm. But you know, the kitchen is kind of like the heart of the home and it's kind of cool that it it's is. in the middle. And she snacks a lot. <laughs> I love so I need both distance from both areas. Mm -hmm. Like I need to like equal, yeah. equal opportunity. Yeah. So you can reach it from wherever you are. I love it. I love how, well, first of all, the marble is beautiful. It's, Thank it's you. not giving renter grade at all, you know, which is fantastic. Ugh. And this beautiful stove, do you cook? I do cook. Okay, what is your favorite meal to prepare? My favorite meal, this is gonna sound so basic. I'll do a grilled shrimp, salad, no, mango, red onion. Absolutely. Do a vinaigrette dressing, something quick, healthy, quick. Yes, quick. The season I use is my best friend. She has her own seasoning. Oh, nice. Black woman. What is it called? Chef Curl RD. Mm -hmm. And she has this Cajun spicy seasoning that yes. I actually use on the shrimp and it's so good. Yeah, I it's love so Cajun seasoning on shrimp. It's so good. So you make a beautiful shrimp salad. We love. love. What else? This is only for special occasions. Cornbread. Ooh. That's when it's like hey, it's the holidays coming up. A lot of times I have to end up being like maybe here for Christmas or mm -hmm. something of the sort. I'll have like family come here. So I'm like, okay, what can I make that I know is like quick mac and cheese to bake mac yes, and cheese. Yes, of course. Another thing that I'm like, okay, only in certain like holidays. Another favorite is potato salad. Yum. But only my mother's recipe. So I, I you know when you like grew up in a household, my mom really knows how to cook. Yes. Like, and I love when kitchens have art, right? Yes. I'm such a fan, and this is reminding me 
um, something that I, I would consider you known for is like really beautiful braided hairstyles. When I saw you doing them yourself, I was like, excuse me? How? Like well, so elaborate. I would draw, so I'll tell you, I'm such a big like idea person. Mm -hmm. And so I say like, and this comes with social media too. Like I'll have a concept or idea and then I have to find the person that can actually execute the idea. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I can't corn roll. Mm -hmm. I can do like box braids, but like when it's like a, a certain like intricate corn roll, like I need someone to come and do it for me. And I remember having the idea of putting, sewing the cowrie shells into my hair. And I was like, either this is going to be really ugly or it's going to be really cute. And I remember like doing it and I was like, you came too far. Like it's, it's such a process. I was like, gotta keep going now. And I was like, I just remember just going, I was like, okay, okay. I was like, oh, this is not bad. And I remember just doing it in the front of the hair first. And then that was like right before fashion week. People loved it. So I was like, okay, what if I did the whole hair, like braid it down and then the seashells around like the hair. That style I feel like was mimicked so much in a good way. Like so I saw it at weddings. I remember one woman stopped me and was like, oh my gosh, she's like, you don't know me. She was like, but I actually had you on my Pinterest. And she was like, I did your hairstyle for my wedding. I and love so that. it was so beautiful. She yes. showed me the photos. But the, the story of me putting these photos in the kitchen is because I don't know if you ever had the experience of like the hot comb on the oh, stove. Oh, 100%. So that was the tie in for me where it was like every everything in my home, it makes so much sense. And when people start talking, they're like, oh, I get it. And so actually talking to a black woman, because I think the last time I said this, it was not to a black yeah, woman. Yeah, and they don't so they have were the very concept. Confused. Yeah. Yes, they didn't have a concept of why these photos were in the kitchen. But I was like, the reason why these are here is because I used to really hate getting my hair done. And my texture is so coarse. You know, during that time, it was a product really speaking for my hair texture. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I remember the constant pain of my mom tugging. She's trying to straighten my hair. Then we went to a relaxer because that's just more manageable. What happened? Yep. And then I had a moment where I was like, I don't want to be, I don't want to get a perm anymore. I want to be natural. And my hair, at a certain point, my hair was breaking off. And I remember once I went natural, my hair just like flourished. And I was like, okay, didn't need this stuff. Didn't it's need just it. found the right products that actually worked for my hair and was manageable. But this was more so like why I put these photos in the kitchen. I love that interpretation and the meaning behind that. I just, you know, am always going to notice art in a kitchen. I mean, I'm a big art fiend, but having them there and that hot cold moment, it is so real for so many of us because it is a strange, uh, you know, mix of this rite of passage slash bonding generally with mm -hmm. your parent uh, generally also met with it's torturous Torture. it's hot you get burned Forehead. and you are just kind of like holding your ears and your kitchen and you know depending on what your hair is like getting your edges down to like your eyebrows practically and we all have these experiences where you have like funny memories we normally laugh at them of like you know things that today we would call torturing children. Torture. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that's so dope. I love it. Yeah. The cool thing on the flip side of this kitchen is that you have a literal massive dining room. Massive. How did you... <laughs> <laughs> the, the finagling of this space? Like, are you good at... What is that game? Um, Rubik's Cube? Rub like, <laughs> I feel like you are a low-key, like, spatial genius. Because yes. Because the bar over here makes perfect sense and there's a table for 10 yes you pull this out there's chairs on that side that are kind of hidden but yeah you can get one two three four five six seven eight comfortably if you want to put four i usually put three on each side yeah but you can get four on each. Absolutely. you know new york we will yes. make the space you'll make it work we'll make it work is there anything that has happened at this table that will give us a little giggle is there a moment is there oh. Or just, or maybe something profound. I don't know. Well, the last group of like that I had here was like for Women's Month actually, and I just invited women that like inspired me, and I brought my brother again, you know, as a chef, yeah. and I felt like there was one moment because he was the only male in the room, and so I was like, we know women are powerful, and I was like, I'm sorry. I like looked back and I was like, I'm so sorry, but it's true. Yeah. I'm like you guys wouldn't know what to do without us. Not and at all. So it was a nice like bonding moment. And it was actually such, I feel like an aha moment of celebrating women, being in this space, 
my space also is filled with a lot of like female bodies mm -hmm. and so you'll see like this interpretation of just like the woman being extremely strong I feel like you know people try to downplay even like a, a mother or someone that stayed at home and I'm like these men wouldn't know what to do if Not they were actually like that's an actual hard job and so like a lot of again the interpretation you'll see was like female bodies around my space and so having like that group of women here was just amazing to kind of see them enjoying the space them you know again like you see these aha moments of oh my gosh I love this I love this and it's been I say a curation but over time like getting here yeah I love that also really cool is the stuff that you have placed on the table um, I feel like it's a really fun mix of contemporary and cultural pieces mm -hmm. The word they use in design is primitive, and I really don't think I can stand that much longer. Um, so I'm going to say cultural for, for fun, right? Right. So these are really pretty. If you could tell us about some of these things and where you got them. So I do like, it's exactly what you said. It's this mixture of very cultural moments. Got this from Senegal, got this from Africa. Mm -hmm. Playing with this coaster, with this uh, cowrie shells on the end. Very Again, kind of like sewing in like different pieces of how I see like cowrie shells. These are more like modern, Tory Burch, Crate and Barrel, got this from an Etsy store. This piece, actually this is a very funny story. So I used to FaceTime a friend and every time I would FaceTime her, I would see this hanging like on her wall and I was like, oh my gosh, I love that piece that you have. And again, like me knowing, like I have like different like female figure, like body figures in my home. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and she was like, I hate that piece. And I'm like, you hate it? I'm like, that's so beautiful. <laughs> and so she, I mean, we would go through this every time. I'm like, oh, there's that piece again. And one day I checked my mail and it was the actual piece. So she had sent it to me and was like, you would enjoy this more than I would. And she's like redoing her home. Yeah. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. That is amazing. So it's a surprise in the mail. It was a surprise in the mail. Fantastic. And it was perfect. And do you know where it's from? I don't. Don't know where it's from. Yeah, it's besides really her beautiful. home. But it's yeah. it's so beautiful. I love also that like the belly's like pregnant. Again, I feel like that's strength Another that we carry. Moment. Like it's it's beautiful. And then you have I kind of mesh these two pieces together of the wood plank came from Crate and Barrel and then I put this portrait on top of it. Oh fun. I actually got it from a black photographer during, you know, having like heightened Black Lives Matter. I was trying to support like black artists and this piece just went so it went so perfectly. Even when Crate and Barrel did their feature, I wanted to make sure yes we'll get their pieces, but it actually is a representation of me. Mm -hmm. And so this Putting this on top of it was like perfect. Yeah, I think it's so beautiful. Most people thought it actually went together, and I was like, Yeah, no, I would have thought that that was one piece. Yeah, yeah, that is so cool. More of your spatial mastermind situation. So it, <laughs> so I wanted to make sure the flow made sense, and so I feel like this was a good divider of like it's still a part of the kitchen. I can chop if I need to, like cutting veggies, especially when like it's dinner parties. I usually put like a spread over here, like cheese spread, wine, your glasses all here and then I wanted a little bit exposed to of like I have like my plates and things that are up but I have a few like plates that I love that I've gotten from Portugal so like these where I'm, I'm like I think they're beautiful they're art so I want you to be able to actually see them a dry flower arrangement I usually get my avocados here the candles usually going and blowing even these two pieces actually I think I thrifted for them like 20 like a quarter kid you not like in love Oklahoma it. and brought them back with me I actually brought a lot of pieces back from Oklahoma Again, of like thrifting and literally like 10 cents, quarters. And so beautiful and just put like a flower, dry flowers in the vase. So tell us what you're doing with the avocados. Is it avocado toast? Is it avocado mash? Ooh, right? it, it goes into the salad. No, it always goes into the salad or in the morning, eggs and just like a side of avocado. That's one like of my favorite breakfast. Pepper, salt, there it is. Yeah. Hot sauce, perfection. Mini. Sections. <laughs> like this, like, I'm literally a little bit shook to be honest. It's like it took it's, a minute to figure it out. It's so smart. Yeah. Because now we have another little seating nook. And this actually, I'll come and work from here a lot, where I'm like, if I'm just like a little bit depleted, and mm -hmm. I just want to maybe just relax, escape for a bit, and so I'm like. I can be like tunnel vision here, almost like kind of like I'm on a plane where I feel like I get so much work done where it's like I'm just now in a nook. So it's it's 
it's a relaxing space. Sometimes I will just like prop up and like take a nap. Sometimes I need a nap in between like working. So I wake up so early. This piece, I actually again got it from Crate and Barrel, but the difference is they had brought in a few black artists to create a few things for their line. So when I did the last partnership with them, I wanted, and I think they noticed again, that I even mentioned like here are different things in different ways. You can take action. So I feel like with any partnership that I do, it's also me talking to them being like, you know, this is how you can improve, or this is how you can bring in more black designers. Like, what are you, I want to know like what's happening besides bringing in like a creative like me. So this was one of the newer pieces that they had, and I was like, I have to get it from my home. And it was so large, but I was like, we're gonna figure this out. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a figure it out person, and I feel like the scale matched so perfectly and balanced out this bigger piece in the kitchen as well. And a black woman in a headscarf? Absolutely. Like, it's, you know, uh, like just floating above a tree with a beautiful, it reminds me of like an outdoor garden or some sort of idealistic version of what like a park might feel like yes. in a beautiful city where you have like this beautiful artistic moment. But yeah, it's kind of indoor outdoor feeling, especially with the, the tree there. So I have a lofted bed and this was actually made by two women who are based in Chicago. They have this business where I was like trying to find a female owned or a POC like again to support and they make lofted beds and customize more so for like apartments and the way it just made the apartment feel more open because once the bed was on the ground also I have a thing about people touching my bed so I'm like it's nice when you have people come over you can't just like fall into my bed no mm -hmm. so it's like yeah no one actually gets up there so it's nice so it's just me but again it left so much play underneath yeah. and my record player one of my favorite lamps that I like was digging for. I had took me a minute to find. I can't even tell you. I know it was somewhere like Copenhagen style. Okay. Because I was like, I need a white soft light, especially in the morning time. So I used to, in my other apartment, because it was smaller, I used to have my desk underneath my bed. And I had this morning light. This is like my morning light in the morning. Now I'm able to kind of like separate the desk and the office space. Again, it's a lounging moment. I am in this beanbag chair so much. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> this is, I, I feel like this is probably the first place that most people go to when they come in my place. Like, we're that. chatting, we're talking, I'm either here and they're like in the beanbag. What is it like living in a lofted bed? I mean, we have these nice, you know, stoppers here because mm -hmm. I would be scared. But yeah, it looks very cozy, very comfortable, and large enough for sure. It's so cozy. Like, when I first got it, I was like, ooh, but did I make the right decision? Because you're like, I was a little nervous at first, especially like you have to get in the routine of like going up. Now I could be half asleep, just like go right. It, it's nothing now. Yeah. It did take some getting used to, but now I, I love it. I can't keep gushing enough about your space planning because you've also managed, this is like a five bedroom apartment, <laughs> because you've managed to have a sizable home office yeah. and what seems to be a gym. Yes. This is really, really, really beautiful. And I think, you know, as we, so many of us work from home, a dedicated space to organize your thoughts and do your work and be inspired is so cool. So I would love if you just kind of share what you were thinking when you started planning the space. So I didn't have like a dedicated space in the last apartment. Well, I made the dedicated space underneath the bed, which worked, but then I was like, I need just a separate space. Like I'm like, this is a space that I'm in the most. Like it needs to feel like it's home. It's still relaxing, but I can still get work done. You know, I had to put up the divider where I'm like, I'm not being distracted. Like here's where it's at. I would like the L shape of this where yeah, it's like, I can still have conversations. I can still talk. Like if someone comes over, if my assistant is here, still can manage to do like my computer work. I have just like this cork board of like, friends, different mood vibes, invites, a letter from my grandmother that she sent mm. right before friend's wedding that's coming up. Then again, like a lot of like the female form bodies, like different sketches that I found like just online, my Vogue feature, even like this piece is like from my mother. We've had this literally since I was like a little girl and I like took it. I was like, mom, I'm taking this. Cause I was like, I can make better use of <laughs> yeah, it in my space. So cool. 
So, and then you'll see a lot of like the mirrors because I want the sun to like bounce in. But again, like I, I try to create this like neutral oasis moment. Even these are really like shot glasses, but I made them into just like where I keep my stamps, my safety pins. I want it even like the holders to look like, you know, pieces of art versus mm -hmm. like I do have like, you know, my regular like cup holder, but then I have like a really cool piece that I got from um, Mexico that I wanted to actually like have these statement pieces within. So again, a little bit of modern, a little bit of culture, a little bit of fun with friends, but this is where I spend the most time in the day. And I think it's so smart that it's like not just, you know, it's in a corner, but doesn't feel shoved in a corner. Right. And you like created a really decent amount of real estate. Like a, it's a good amount of space here to be functional and it's so funny because a lot of people talk about like their, you know, like neutral spaces or whatever, and especially in the city, like this need for calm. We mm -hmm. talk about it on a few episodes where it's like you're so crazy and chaotic and stimulated when you come home and want like a sense of peace. Right. But reiterating that neutral does not have to be boring. Right. And it's just about shapes and textures and fun things and small pops of color. It's just very, very cohesive and cool. So I mean, I just can't say enough about how much I love office. This lamp is oh. beautiful. Where's that from? Great mural. Yes. Yes. They I, do a really good job. They they do a really, really good job with like neutral pieces. Like this whole set is from Crate and Barrel. I love this desk. I actually saw it when I was in Crate and Barrel. It actually folds in. So when I want it to be like just the short desk, I can. And then I want to have it out, I can as well. Mm -hmm. But I like the divider section. And like it keeps me in this <laughs> in this area just working. It's sort of locked in. Yes. And which is a good thing. I sit on this poof with trepidation. I'm five foot ten, I'm big. People love to squish and I can trust you. I was just saying like, I trust you yes. because we love a firm seat. Because it was like, sure, you sit firm. on the poof. Mm -mm. How far does it go? Like, do I, am I on the floor now? And I sat down and I'm like, oh, pleasantly surprised. So right up. And my Pilates spine is working, you know. I love your space. I'm so glad you wanted to do this. I feel like, you know, internet friends who, we don't cross paths that often. Right. And so it's just beautiful to get to hang out with you and check out your very sick apartment you. that you've done so much with. I like, you've really set the, the groundwork for, oh, well my space is like not huge or, you know, mm -hmm. I don't have, you know, this many bedrooms or walls and things like that. Like you've turned a large, I guess a large studio into this incredible lofted space with basically nine rooms. <laughs> it really There's is. There's a home like, gym, you guys. Three, There's four, a home four, gym. Five, six, seven. You didn't get the closet. Are you crazy? <laughs> How did that happen? I, I told you. I was like, people Little, forget about the closet. I, I was so, I'm sorry. I've never, like the layout was literally blowing my mind. When you made me count, I was like one, two, and I said, uh-oh. The closet. <laughs> I'm so glad we had that moment. Okay. You should put that in there. No, though. it is. This is the same. <laughs> Rewind the closet. If you haven't followed Candace Marie, aka at Marie Mag, on Instagram or seen her in Vogue and everywhere else online, the wardrobe is sickening. So we've got to dive in there. We're going to do top five if we can. Okay. If we can't, we'll do top 10. I think we're doing top 10. Top 10 pieces? Like, it could be an accessory, okay. a shoe, okay. an article of clothing. Let's go. Let's go.